House uh, press secretary getting a uh, well questioned pretty seriously and 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 frankly for good reason. Uh, we've been led to believe that, the, that at least a photograph would be released of the Osama bin Laden uh, killing and and whether you thought that was a good idea or not is is really neither here nor there. The point is we were led to believe that would happen. Now we're told that the decision had not been made until the day, today and that the decision is not to release the photograph. Well, you know, let me read this first. We may never see photographic evidence of Osama bin Laden's death. President Obama today saying he will not release the pictures. The White House says the president debated whether making them public would do more harm than good. About a half an hour ago, the White House press secretary explained the president's decision. Here is Scusche. There is no need to release these photographs to establish Osama bin Laden's identity. Uh, and he saw uh, no other compelling reason to release them given the potential for national security risks and, 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 and further because he believes, as he said so clearly, this is not who we are. In, in fact, what he told CBS News in, a, in an interview that will air on 60 Minutes is, look, we killed the man. Is there a need to spike the football? Meaning, you scored a touchdown clearly, you won the thing, do you need to rub it in? That was his suggestion. At any rate, some members of Congress have said that the White House should indeed release a picture at least, what people that people need to see a picture. But other lawmakers and officials inside the administration have argued that the photos might inflame tensions. And conspiracy theorists would simply claim they're fake. A photo's not convincing. One who doesn't want to be convinced, come on, think birth certificate. The president's decision coming just hours after we learned more about those photographs. Or we're told more things. We haven't learned anything. We've been told things. A senior U.S. official, who will not be named, says one person shows a large open gunshot wound in the terror leader's head, and that you can actually see pieces of bin Laden's brain. But there's another matter going on here as well. Uh, and, and that has to do, well, let, let's finish this up. But the other one is about the sequence of events. And you may say, oh, I don't care what the sequence of events is. The man's dead. Boom, boom, done. Well, now think about it this way. Was there a time when the, the man was captured and then killed. And maybe you don't care about that either, unless there were questions in the middle. And to that, we cannot get an official answer. And part of the reason we bring it up is because of what President Obama said on Monday night at a bipartisan event when describing the takedown of Osama bin Laden. There's a lot of applause in here, but listen to what the President of the United States said. Listen. Last night, uh, as Americans learned that the United States had carried out an operation that resulted in the capture and death of Osama bin Laden. Uh, we Capture and death of Osama bin Laden. Apparently, while we were running that soundbite, we have an on-the-record statement from the Pentagon on this matter. Because the reason, another reason we bring it up is a daughter of Osama bin Laden, who is said to have been in the room when Osama bin Laden was shot and killed, says the United States first captured him and then killed him and then dragged him onto a helicopter. But the big question is, if he was captured and then later killed, how much time was in the middle? And did anybody get a question in? Did Osama bin Laden talk? Maybe we have something official now. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon, something official with a named source? We do indeed. Nice. It's in fact a CIA spokesman, George Little. We asked that very question just moments ago, and this is his quote. It is absolutely wrong to suggest that bin Laden was executed inside the compound. We have no indication whatsoever that he was questioned on the scene. That is from CIA spokesman George Little. We asked him that very question. Um, there was not enough time to question him. There is no sense uh, from talking to officials uh, in recent days, but also from talking to George Little at this point, at this moment in time, based on the after action reports from that Navy SEAL team, and they have all been debriefed at this point. There was no time to interrogate bin Laden. He was not captured. And as one official here in the Pentagon said, a Pentagon spokesman, uh, Brian Whitman, said you can either believe us or you can believe this, uh, these reports in Pakistani newspapers uh, uh, purportedly quoting the 12-year-old daughter of bin Laden. Well, they have to understand that, that part of this confusion is, frankly, of our government's own making. Uh, because the first story that we got was there was a fight, and during this fight, bin Laden fired something off, and we shot and killed him. Then there was a new story. The new story was that there was a gunfight, and then they went into the room, and Usama did not participate in the gunfight, but he resisted, and we killed him. When followed up with what kind of resistance? Well, he reached for a gun. 
and there's no evidence of that, and then shot and killed him. And then we learned there are children in the room. First, there was a wife who was shot. Now, I understand in the fog of war, things get all messy in the beginning, but if there was time, if the president is the one who said he was captured and then killed, it was the president, and that they wouldn't come on the record to refute that was another matter. Well, now I guess they have, so that's very helpful. Well, Shepard, I think what is what we still have one missing piece to this puzzle is how long were the was the Navy SEAL team in the room with bin Laden before he was shot and killed my understanding of the way things unfolded is the whole operation was 40 minutes long the raid lasted 40 minutes I'm told there was a 20 minute firefight make as the team made its way from the first floor to the third floor of the main building where they found eventually found bin Laden with 10 other members of his family in the room there were children in the room at the time I'm told that from the moments that the SEAL team came in to that room some of those children scurried out the door so some did get out the door but some presumably remained in the door within those moments when the SEAL team arrived in the room I'm told that very very in quick order the wife the Yemeni wife uh, shouted out Usama's name and then lunged at the SEAL team member she was shot in the leg she went down the SEAL team member who had the gun facing Osama bin Laden found himself almost face to face with bin Laden. The question is how much time between that moment and when he was shot took place and we don't have an answer to that but my impression from talking to officials in recent days for the last three days is that there was not a lot of time in that room. And I don't know, I don't know what happened. Neither one of us was there. What I would like to know is did Osama bin Laden say anything? And if he said something, what did he say? Because you're not about to tell me they didn't have somebody in there who could speak the language when we know for a fact they've been practicing for this thing. And we have very good information to suggest they've been practicing for this thing in a sort of replica of that house for a very long time. They had a plan for this thing. And by the way, they said there were no guards at this house, didn't they? No security guards. That's true. Then with what whom we... was this firefight carried out? Okay, let, I think I have some answers to this, Chef. Good. From awesome. what I understand, from what I understand, uh, first of all, there was there were 24 SEAL Team Six members who were uh, dropped into that compound. There was one translator, so there were 25 people. There was also one dog that was uh, taken with this team as they made their way through the compound. The shooting there was there were no guards at the compound. Uh, that is what I've been told. But there were two, the two couriers who were male, the two brothers, we now have their names, um, uh, 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 what are their right, names? Tarek, Tarek and Ahmed Khan, uh, two Pakistanis, uh, they were Pashtun, born in Kuwait. They were the two couriers who lived at the compound with their families. Those two men had weapons, so did Osama bin Laden's adult son, Hamza. He had a weapon, and they were firing on lower floors. Bin Laden was on the third floor of the main house. There was also a fire. There, there was firing taking place from those two couriers, the males and Hamza. So three men had guns, and they were firing those weapons before they got to Bin Laden. And that's what took place in terms of the 20-minute firefight that ensued as they made their way up the stairs. All right. Well, that's all very interesting. I, I, at some point, if Osama bin Laden said anything. I don't know if they'll tell us if he did or what he said, and that might be classified and whatever, and so be it. But if he said something, that'd be cool to know. Jennifer it would Griffin, be I, interesting. It, would, it yeah. would be very interesting to know. I, I'd love to know what he had to say. I don't know if I believe what he said. Today, his daughter said that, they, that we captured him, 